Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. I bow my knees to the Father. To bow your knees is such a beautiful display of submission, of surrender. And while in itself it does not avail anything without the heart, just bowing your knee does not make you holy. Sometimes people think that they can obtain a sense of holiness by physical movements. I fold my hands, I bow my knees, but unless these are the expressions of the heart, they have no, no spiritual value. But when they express the heart, or as Jesus would say in Luke 6, 45, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Or as Paul would say in Romans 10, verse 10, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth one speaks of salvation. You see, we express with our mouth what lives in our heart. We bow the knee as an expression of our submission of heart, our surrender of heart. We fold our hands as an expression. We lift our hands. It says in Lamentations chapter 3, lifting up our hearts and our hands to God. Or as David would say in, in Psalm 63, I lift up my hands to you. He says in another psalm, it's like an evening sacrifice. I wave my hands as I lift them to you. Not waving as in saying hello, goodbye, but as an offering to God as a praise to God. <clears throat> and you see Paul here in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Here's the reason, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints which uh, what is the width, length, depth and height to know the love of Christ he's speaking of the dimension of it to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Paul, in other words, is saying, when I begin to realize, when I realize and think and experience this wonder of the love of our Savior, that we now can be filled and flooded with God himself through his great love, I, I bow my knee at the wonder of it, at the amazement of it, at the absolute surrender to it. Friends, what bows your knee? You know, often in a battle, it's the bowing of the knee that shows the surrender. When a conqueror came, he would make all the conquered ones kneel. Or when homage was given to powers, kings, rulers, emperors, they would bow the knee before the conqueror or before the emperor or before the king to show homage, to show submission, to show acceptance of that person's authority. And I believe that this is an attribute that we can to a degree give of ourselves, but to its deepest nature and roots we can only receive in ourselves through the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that you might be strengthened with might through his spirit in your inward man 
so that Christ may be realized, experienced to be living in your heart by faith and that you being rooted in love, His love, may together with all saints realize with this the height, the depth, the breadth and length of his love and become filled and flooded with God himself and have the richest measure of his divine presence which he, God himself, is able to work in you by his power in you far beyond anything you could dare ask, hope or pray to God be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. So, <laughs> Surrender, Andrew Murray, Andrew Murray wrote some 242 books. One of his books, and you could go to LibriVox.com and download it and listen to it. I do that. L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X.com and it's free of charge. And you can listen to his book, Surrender, Full Surrender. In the opening of that book, Andrew Murray is sharing how he was talking with somebody, which the statement that person gave inspired him to write that booklet. And he was talking with somebody and he asked that person, what do you believe is the great need of the church in our day? And we're talking now 1890, 1880, 1890, uh, 1900, 1910, so within those years. And he asked, what do you believe is the great need of the Christian church today? And that man said to him without hesitation, full surrender. D.L. Moody, who was ministering in those days, evangelizing, phenomenal, phenomenal evangelist, incredible books, of Dio Moody, you can go on LibriVox and download those. I would encourage you to do that. His books are superb. Andrew Murray mentions Dio Moody. Andrew Murray was invited, I think in 1898, to speak at Dio Moody Institute in, in Chicago. <laughs> and, he, and Dio Moody said, the world has yet to see today what God can do through somebody holy given to him, surrender to him. Surrender, someone, my wife actually, likened to the peeling of an onion. You take one layer of self away and often not without tears, and there's another layer. And you take that layer of self away and there's another layer. And you take that layer of self away and the more that you take it away often the more the tears flow and you see that is maybe a bit of an unusual likeness but surrender is such a powerful work of God's grace dear friends <laughs> and when we're talking about I bow my knee to the Father you see if you think about Jacob Remember Jacob, how he had to face the hatred of his brother. And that hatred was extremely fierce and deep rooted in the very nature of Esau. And Esau had embodied the nature of those who fall short of God's glory because they choose self rather than God. They choose to live to please themselves instead of choose to live to please God. That is the fundamental fountain of hatred, where you choose self over God. And Esau embodied that nature where Jacob, having a self that had many fallacies, failures, he chose God rather than self again and again and again and the turning point of Jacob's life that was some 21 years of lead up where God was forming and shaping that precious man many years before as well but those 21 years were quite quite dramatic displayed in scripture 
And at the point of his real turning, of coming back, he had to face his brother. And he wrestled with God, it says. And what was he wrestling for? He was not wrestling to have his will. He was not wrestling for what he wanted. He was not wrestling for his plans and purposes, desires, lusts and angers and whatever. No, he was wrestling for the blessing of the Lord that God had given in Abraham. Abraham had said to God had said to Abraham in Genesis 12, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing and I will bless all who bless you and curse him who curses you. And he was wrestling for that blessing while Esau had sold the blessing for personal pleasure. That is where the birth of that hate came from, the hate against the blessing. You see the same thing in Cain and Abel. Cain refused to humble himself and worship God in the way that God says, this is the way that I'll give you access, just like I did your brother. And he refused to do it. And he became a murderer of his brother. Read it in Genesis 12. And you see in Esau, and I've often prayed and said to God, I am not, I am not an Esau. I will not sacrifice your blessing for my pleasure. I will sacrifice my pleasure for your blessing. I will give up everything for the pearl of great price. I will sell all my father for the pearl of great price. You are the pearl of great price, my father. To live in your blessing, father, I want above all else. And I give up all else for it. <laughs> Can you hear me? And here Jacob was wrestling for the blessing. And God marked his flesh. He marked his flesh. He had a limb. In other words, he was no longer able to walk in his own strength. Everybody could see it, that in himself he was weak, but in God he was strong. And now here comes his brother with 400 horsemen. How frightening. And he sends gifts to his brothers and gifts to his brothers, and gifts to his brothers. You cannot live in the blessing and not show it. And he gives gifts to his brother. And there comes his brother with all those horses, 400 horses, how frightening. And Jacob falls down on his face and he bows down. I bow my knee before the Father of glory that he may grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory. You see it? right here in, in, in Ephesians 3, verse 14 through 21. And he bows down and he looks up to his brother and he bows down seven times. He bows down. What was he displaying? His submission to the Father, trusting in the Father's blessing, in the Father's keeping. And his brother broke down in his hatred by that spirit of grace, by that spirit of submission, the spirit that was in Jacob came upon his brother and his brother was liberated from hate and demonic influence and, and wept and hugged him and kissed him. <laughs> and instead of murder, that was forgiveness and it shows you that grace triumphs over judgment, that the love of God triumphs over hate. And therefore he says, love those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who cause you pain. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 6 and Luke 6 and 7, and I want to encourage you today, bow your knees and keep bowing. And keep bowing, follow Jacob's example, keep bowing in the face of hatred, keep bowing in the face of, of poverty, of lack financially, of financial, physical, emotional difficulties, marital difficulties, keep bowing, keep bowing and say, Father, 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 your blessing makes rich and you add no sorrow to it i long for your blessing my father i bow to your name i bow to your son jesus that in him i'm blessed with every spiritual blessing and you keep bowing and bowing and bowing until the grace breaks through every barrier and every hostility and opposition and lack and want in your life and i'll tell you the truth to God be the glory by Christ Jesus in our lives. 
in Jesus' name. Amen? Have a good day.